When faith works, leaning, uh, learning to listen when God speaks, we're dealing with James chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And uh, hearing from God requires listening. And sometimes God speaks clearest in the darkest places of life. You know, a lot of times when everything is just going along peachy keen and things are good and there's no problems and no challenges, you don't sometimes pay attention to God the way that you should. I think about Elijah. He was alone when in the cave and he heard that small, still voice of God. I think about Paul who was alone in a jail cell when he wrote many of the epistles that we find in the New Testament. I think about John who was alone when he wrote the book of the Revelation on the Isle of Patmos. I think about Jesus who was alone in the garden when he wrote, uh, won the battle rather over the flesh and uh, and he ultimately defeated Satan's sin and, and the grave. And we have victory in him today. When God speaks to you, I'm telling you, it will be clear. I've talked to people and they've talked about, well, you know, I'm not sure if God's speaking to me. I said, there's no question mark when God speaks to you. You'll recognize and you'll know what he is saying to you. You just need to obey and listen to him. So he will confirm this. So you may ask, well, preacher, how does he then really speak to us. How does he confirm it? How do we really know? He does it through his word. And the word of God is a very important part of your life as a Christian. So you can be assured that God will guide you through the unfamiliar territory many times that we face. He will bring us through the discomforts that we encounter and the fears that we uh, have to face in life. And what's the ultimate then Results. He brings victory into your life. And so our God is a God who indeed is about victory. There's a, there's a uh, great difference between hearing the word and listening intently. Have you ever heard been somebody and you're just pouring your heart out to them? They were hearing what you were saying, but they were not listening to what you were saying. And, uh, you know, it's important not only do we hear it's important that we listen. It's important that we listen to what God's trying to tell us. Many of us are weary, and if we're honest, you know, these things, sometimes it makes the weariness in our life, makes it difficult to listen carefully when God's trying to speak to us. Sometimes God has to just really put you in a position where you will listen, that you won't have distractions, and you will just have to focus your attention on what he's trying to tell you. So... There, there's nothing more important in life. There is no discipline more essential today than hearing, and not only hearing, but understanding, not only hearing and understanding, but applying today the Word of God in your life. So today, that is one of the most important tools that God has given you, and you need to utilize it. So the Bible then it's critical for your spiritual development. Let me say that again. The Bible is critical for your spiritual development. Now, let me give you several points on that and why that's important, why that's an imperative. The Word of God is instrumental in bringing us to salvation. So it's the Word that we read or we hear or we receive that brings about salvation. We were saved and we are saved by Christ, but we would know nothing apart if we didn't have the Word. The Word is proclaims what Jesus did for us. John 3, 16 is really a nice summary of what he did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you receive Christ, but you heard it through the word. Not only today is it instrumental as part of bringing us to salvation, but also the Bible is instrumental in developing us through a process that is called sanctification. See, there's another process involved in your salvation. Once you're saved, now you should desire and, and uh, pursue to be sanctified. That means today that you are usable, that you submit to the kingdom of God, his work, his leadership in your life. You cannot be the Christian that God really wants you to be if you do not spend adequate time in his word. Paul said and wrote to Timothy, he said, you've got to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you will never grow, hear me, 
You will never grow to the level that God wants you to be if you don't listen and yield to the scriptures. You say, well, I read the Bible every day. But are you applying the Bible every day? It's one thing to read it. It's another thing to apply it. It's just not the reading. There's a compulsion that comes in reading that should then motivate you to want to serve and do what God's telling you to do. We need, we really, uh, we need more of the Bible, not less of the Bible. We need more of God's word in us every day. It's just not what I give you here a few times during the course of a week. This is just one part of it. Your real growth process is what you're doing with God through the rest of your time. So we need to do more than just hear the word. We need to listen intently to the word. We need to then apply obedience to the word. So if you've heard the word, you've read the word, you've meditated on the word, then you've got to then put that to action by listening and obeying what the word tells you to do. So true believers will not only hear God when he speaks, but they will also listen to what God is saying intently. You say, well, are you telling me God speaks to me through the Bible? Absolutely. That is the written word of God. It's God breathed. It's God speaking to you. It's God instructing you. It's God guiding you. And it's another part of that. It's God blessing you. You want to be blessed? Say amen. amen. Read the word. Get in the word. So James gives us three practical instructions today to help us to receive the scriptures more uh, efficient in our lives. The first thing today is this. If you want to listen when God speaks, you've got to recognize obstacles that would prevent you from doing so. You know, you've got to recognize what will be an obstacle or a barrier or something that would keep you away from doing what God wants you to do. James 1 19, this is what James said. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now, you think, well, that's, that's a short verse, isn't it? But it is chock full of a lot of information that we're going to look at. James uncovers basically real obstacles today that fight against us when we're trying to get a word from God. And I'm going to tell you, anytime that you're trying to get a word from God, Satan is going to do everything to try to create an atmosphere of obstacles in your life to keep you away from God. So <clears throat> James lists in that one verse, verse 19, three obstacles that fight against us when we're trying to listen to God and what God wants to do in our lives. Obstacle number one, selective reception. That's what I call it. We are not quick to hear. We want to impose the will on God, our will on God, rather than us receiving and obeying God's will for us. We want to tell God what to do in our lives. Let me just tell you right now, you need to stop that. It doesn't work that way. It's not you telling God what to do. It's God telling you what to do. God knows a low, whole lot more and has a lot more wisdom. And today he will lead you. And just like King David said, he'll lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He'll take you by the, by the places of refreshing. He'll take you to the place of encouragement and strength and blessings. We don't really hear God the way that we should today. We want God to hear us. I mean, man, we pray and we tell God we bring the shopping list. I mean, we got reams of things that we're reading off to God that we want God to do for us. But we never, and then we jump up and say, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. But God said, wait a minute. I want to speak to you. Now, you've told me what you want, but let me tell you how to get what you need. And you're only going to get it by the process of obedience unto the Lord. So you can't hear what you want to hear and leave the rest out. It's just like the word of God. You just can't read selective readings in the Bible that's an encouragement. You've got to take the whole counsel of God, right? So the whole counsel of God is it refines you, it, re, it, it gives you strength, it gives you encouragement, it gives you everything that you need in life. One, the re, one of the reasons today is that we're not in God's word and we're not hearing God and we're not receiving the instruction of God is because we become too busy. We become too consumed. Well, preacher, I just don't have time. Folks, I'm going to tell you today, 
You better start making time for God in your life. Amen. It's interesting that we can't even sit in a worship service without checking social media and doing Google searches. Amen. I'm just being bluntly honest with you here. You said, did you see me doing that? It doesn't matter whether I saw you or not. God sees what you're doing. Amen. You can put it down your lap in the pew, under the pew. You can conceal it any way you want to, but God still sees you then there doing this. Pagan chapter page of reading the gossip line of Facebook to see what people are doing. Put your phone in your pocket or in your car and leave it there. Amen. You don't need it unless you've got the word on it. Now, I know some of you, uh, I know Derek uses, he's back there. He's checking his uh, stock on the, uh, no. <laughs> but no, no, he has a scripture on, on his telephone, which we, many of us do, and I understand that. But I can also tell you, I can pretty much look across this congregation on any given Sunday and tell you who's got scripture on the screen and who's got Facebook or Google searches or whatever they're doing on it. Use it for God's glory. Amen. But uh, daily we ask God for a word from him, and we want to give him 30 seconds to do it. You know, uh, you, you can't put God in a box, and you can't put God on a timer. You've got to take the time to let God speak to you. We hear what we want to hear, but we... Listen to what we, what's most important to us. We just want, what's the bottom line? Sometimes God just doesn't give you the bottom line. God has to take you through a process to get you to the bottom line. So we have to push back against this thing of what we call selective reception. The reason so many never hear from God is uh, because it's not important to us. We, we want what's important to us. I'm going to tell you, the entire counsel of this precious book is important to you. Everything that God says in 66 books has application to your life, has meaning in your life, will bring blessings to your life. It will refine your life. It will improve your life. It will get sin out of your life. It will secure your life. It will give you peace in your life. It will give you joy in your life. You got all that in this book called the Word of God. And God just wants us to take some time and let him speak to us today. So you don't need a word from God when you have a Bible full of words from God. <laughs> just open the book and read it. And you'll find all the words that you can absorb into your spirit. So don't just come to worship. Come to worship desiring to hear from God. Amen. Obstacle number two is sharp replies. These are the three things and I just changed the wording a little bit there in verse 19. Be careful not to speak before you listen. Have y'all ever done that? You engaged your mouth before you engaged your brain? Yeah, and I mean, all of a sudden you just say, oh, let me take that back. I'm oh, sorry, once it's out, it's gone. Amen. So you got to, you know, you, you use that phraseology, you think before you speak. You have two ears. You got one mouth. Therefore, you should listen twice as much as you talk. <laughs> Amen. Ooh, that's, that's, uh, that's cutting edge, isn't it? Amen. Have you thought that uh, you have one tongue to speak? You've got a double row of teeth to fence that tongue in? Amen. So, sometimes you need to fence that rascal in. Don't let it flop on you. I mean, you know, what God says is more important is more important than what we think. Well, I think, I've, you know, well, my opinion is, your opinion is not worth a paddle to blow it up with. <laughs> Preacher, you're just kicking me right in the teeth. No, I don't kick your teeth out because remember, that's your fence to keep that tongue in, in place. The point is today, we think a lot of things, we're opinionated about a lot of things, but it doesn't matter to us about what God says about these things. What's more important is what God says today. If you're going to hear from God, you've got to learn today to push your opinions aside and come to the scripture today with a receptive mind. You can't pick and choose. Oh, I'll read these scriptures because these are uplifting and encouraging. No, you need to read the scriptures too that says, you know, 
uh, you need to get your life straightened out. You need to trust God. You need to repent of your sins. You need to serve the Lord. So today, we, we are to say, Lord, teach me whatever you want to teach me. And every time you open the pages of this book, that's exactly what should be the desire of your heart. You should be saying to God, teach me what you want me to hear. Show me what you want me to know. Refine my life that I can be usable for your kingdom. The point is, you can't listen when you're talking. And sometimes you just need to be still and know that he is God and let him speak to you. And he will. But that means you just can't reel through your prayer time, reel through your Bible reading time, and then just say, thank you, Lord, when you're out the door. Take some time for God to speak to you. Amen. When we're reading the Bible, we do not need to interrupt God. And I know if he's like me, if I sit down to read the Bible or pray or whatever, I just have to take that cell phone and put it in the other room. Do something with it. Because as soon as I do that, I'm telling you, if it's not texting, it's messaging, or it's ringing, or it's tweeting, or it's twerping, or it's jumping and jerking, and, and everything it can do, my phone does it. We've got to be willing today to conform our lives to the Word of God. You say, well, I thought we'd conform our lives to God. When you conform your life to the Word, you'll conform your life to God. James 1.26 says, If any man among you, uh, you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but delivereth uh, uh, his, his own, out of his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Now let me give you obstacle number three. Avoid self-reactions today. You cannot become angry when you approach God. Sometimes God's going to tell you things to do that maybe it's going to be against your grain. But listen, you've got to obey the entire counsel of God's word and let it speak to you. Let's go to point number two. If you want to listen when God speaks, you've got to remove these obstacles. Not only identify them, but you've got to remove them. So James 1.20 says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So, when Scripture convicts us over sin, we've got two choices to make in that process. Number one choice is this. Get mad, ignore what God said, and miss the message. Have you ever done that? I have, and I bet you have too. We all have, so we've got to acknowledge that. But getting mad and ignoring God's message today, who does it hurt? You. It hurts us. The second thing is what we need to do. Receive the message and humble yourself and turn away from your sin. So today, that is submitting to the will, the leadership, the grace of God. That's important. So when we speak with anger, you know what anger leads to? It leads to chaos. And chaos leads to more anger, which draws us further and further away from God. So what have you done? You're not doing nothing but working against yourself. Get smart. Start cooperating with what God says in his word. Selfish reactions prevent us from hearing the reality of what God wants us to hear. So when you come, when it comes to the Bible, you, you have a choice to be angry over it and, ha and not have the righteousness of God in your life. Or you can yield to it and let that word, the righteousness of God, change you changes you into right living today. Listen, you don't necessarily need to learn more Bible. What? You need to learn to obey what you've already read and listened to. Amen. So get a grasp on what you've already got before you try to get out into the deep waters. You've got to, you've got to get yourself where you are stable in the word and let the word work through you step by step, process by process. Each day, God will work in your life if you desire for him to do that. We become educated beyond sometimes our obedience level. We know a lot. We know a lot of Bible, but we can't know how to apply it. You know, you can know the whole Bible. You can memorize the whole thing. But if you're not applying it and using it, of what good is it? Well, I've memorized 40 chapters in the Bible. Well, fantastic. How many of those 40 chapters, how many of those 40 verses, how many four verses, how many one verse, Oh, you're applying to your life every day. How much are you living it? It's not to impress people to say, oh, I've learned the whole New Testament. I've learned the whole book of John. I've learned the book of Romans. Well, that's great. 
but it's no value if you don't apply it. So therefore, it's important today. James says, you not only recognize those obstacles, but you must also remove those obstacles. It's one thing to say, well, I got a problem with this. You need to find out how to get past that problem today. You have to take active steps when God's speaking to you. James 1, 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. Now, this is interesting because James then is trying to speak to us about this. He says he's revealing today parts of our lives we don't realize is there. We call this the sin of omission. So therefore today, we're omitting things. We're not dealing with things in our life that we need to deal with. And I'm going to tell you, sin today has to be dealt with in your life. When you get serious about walking with God, he will bring certain actions and attitudes to light in your life for you and I to forsake. So we don't need today to cleave to things that today are working not in our benefit, but against us. We need to get that stuff out. We need to delete this stuff. I'm sure, you know, you've, if you've got emails and you get all this stuff and uh, you go through and delete, 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 psh, gone. Well, you need to do the same thing with some of the sin, all the sin in your life, really. You need to delete this stuff and focus on God. When God brings these things to light, you, you've, and if you're refusing to listen today, God can't speak to you. And he can't deal with those things in your life because you won't listen to him. You cannot hear God and not be willing to deal with those incidental sins in your life. You've got to deal with what God is showing you in your life that needs attention. You've got to pay attention. I mean, if you've got health issues going on, those are warning signals something's wrong, right? So you go and you get it checked out. Well, God's got warning signals in your spiritual life to warn you when you're headed in the wrong direction. You need to obey those things. Then there are intentional sins today because he said in verse 21, he says, wherefore lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. So these are sins, what we call not only sins of omission, these are sins of commission. These are the intentional, corrupt, deliberate sins that we do every day and don't say, I can't help it, you can. God will help you to get victory over any sin that's in your life. You can compartment, you cannot compartmentalize your life, your personal life, and just stick it back in one place. Listen, you can't have a personal life and a spiritual life. You've got a life, and your life should be reflective of Christ and the work that he desires to do in your life. It's dangerous to cover the sin in your life because it's going to destroy you. So when you're trying to cover sin, you're just absolutely digging a deeper hole and creating more problems in your life. Be assured, progressional sin has a progression and it will destroy you. Just like if you've been having things happen in your body and you say, man, I don't know what's going on here. And you go to the, and you think, well, I maybe need to go to the doctor, you know, and you, you know the telltale signs of what you're dealing with could be leading to a situation that's not good but you ignore those signs and you don't take care of it. And the next thing you know, then that progression of not taking care of it has then created more problems in your life, right? So what could have been easily corrected now may not be correctable. So by that progression of ignoring it, you find yourself with a greater progression in your life of trouble, of sin. If you got sin, deal with it. Ask God to forgive you of it and ask God to strengthen you so you don't practice it. Amen. And it starts in the mind and it deceives us and it moves to our heart and then it goes beyond that. And what happens is then it brings about remorse. You have to get rid of the distractions in your life that's keeping you from doing the things that God wants to bless you with. You will never hear from God as long as you're entertaining distractions today. And let me tell you, you know, we call them excuses. You can call them what you want to. They are distractions that's keeping you from getting blessed of God. So you're really, you're becoming your own worst enemy by doing these things today. Let me give you point number three. And the church said amen. amen. Just checking to make sure you're still out there. If you want to listen when God speaks, you've got to replace the obstacles. Going on in verse 21. The B part says, and receive with meekness 
the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. You must allow the word of God. Hear what I'm going to say, and I want you to get this. You've got to let the word of God take root in your life. Amen. What we need to do is to be teachable. You must desire for God's word to teach you and to direct you and to show you and to encourage you today. In humility, we receive the implanted word of God because it's able to save our souls. That's the first step, the first process. You, you've heard the old saying, I just heard it yesterday. I was doing some study and I went out and I heard this comment made, old habits are hard to break. <laughs> yeah, they sure are. And the more you practice them, the harder they are to break too. It's just not that we identify the bad habits. Well, you know, I got a problem with this or that or the other. You've got to replace those bad habits. You've got to get rid of those bad habits. And today God will help you to do that. But you've got to be willing today to let God do that in your life. So we have identified some obstacles that keep us from listening to God. So now we need to replace those obstacles today with things that will change your living today. So rather than selective reception today or hearing what we want to hear, we are now to work towards a complete reception of what God wants to speak to us about. So we need to listen to all that God has to say. Yeah, but I'm scared God's going to call me to do something today. If he calls you to do something, he will give you the power and the strength to do it. Amen. So we, we today need to replace, we need to place ourselves under the authority of God that he is directing us today. We, we need for him to dictate how we are to live our lives and how that our lives should bring glory to him. Now, there are some things that will help you to listen to God completely, and I'm going to give them to you today that will help you today. And I, they're in your little study guide there, so take them and apply them. One, you have to be a better listener I found that in order for me to be an effective pastor, I've got to be a good listener. And I learned that a long time ago with what I did before the calling and the preparation and all the other things and being in ministry. You've got to be a good listener. I mean, my background in the secular world was human resources. You've got to be a good listener. And folks, in any form of life, and as a Christian... As a Christian, you've got to be a good listener today. You have to decide you really want to uh, desire and want all that God wants to give you. Not only today do you have to be a good listener, but next point is you have to confess your sins to God before he speaks. There's a mechanism within you that God placed there upon salvation that when you sin, it's called conviction, and God chastens those whom he loves. It's a process today that God brings to your light those things that you have committed and you need to repent of them and get rid of them in your life to restore your, fel your fellowship and your relationship. God's not actually, if you'll think about it, he's not obligated to say anything to us today. But we've got to confess before we can receive. Are you hearing me? You've got to have a daily cleansing of your temple. Well, I got Jesus in my heart. I got saved, and I haven't had to ask God to forgive me since then. Oh, you might have a good uh, backlog of sin in your life then. That took care of the sin at that moment and the sin in the past. Daily, you're still living in a flesh body. You still have the same natural tendencies. You still commit sin, and it's an, it's an imperative. It's necessary. You have to confess your sins every day and cleanse your heart before God. Not only that today, next point, you've got to read the Word of God. I read it when I come to church. No, that's not the Word. You've got to read the Word daily. You need to set aside a time. You know your best time. You know your best where you have your best attention to God. Take that and use it for God's word. Stats say that only 19%, listen to this, I didn't, I didn't develop the stat, it's documented. Only 19% of believers say that they read the Bible daily. Are you one of those 19% or are you one of those others? If you don't read the Bible, it's very simple. You're not going to grow in your faith. If you read the Bible... It will impact today all other Christian disciplines within your life. So if you read the Bible, you will pray more, 
you will witness more, you will serve more, you will give more, and you'll be used more. It's that simple. Hallelujah. Then you've got to pray over the word, uh, the word of God. We have to learn to listen to God's will when we pray. It's just not you reading off the shopping list that you've got for God. Your prayer time is not you telling everything to God that you want him to know. Your prayer time is actually for God to speak to you for everything he wants you to know. Did you hear that? Say amen. amen. You've got to be willing to let God speak to you today. Most of our prayer is telling God what we want and what we want him to do. Learn to listen to what God wants to say to you in his word. And then you've got to prepare for worship. We should come to church. You should have come in this place today hungry for a word from God. Well, preacher, what are you preaching on? It's on the front of your bulletin. How many, how many of you have got a bulletin? What does it say on the front of it? No. Nope. What's that little saying down on the side beside that cross? Grace. Grace alone. See, you're not reading your bulletin. Grace alone. That's the message this morning. Grace alone. And folks, listen. We should come in here prepared, desirous, and wanting to worship God. Don't come to church thinking, well, you sitting there thinking, about, man, I got to do this and I got to get that done. Um, I got this appointment. I got this going on. Take all that stuff and leave it out there in the glove box or in the car or someplace. Leave it at home. Don't deal with that while you're in here. Let God deal with your heart to better equip you to deal with that stuff that you're going to have to face. See, if you don't build yourself up in the faith and in the word, you cannot effectively then work through the situations that you're facing. What gets lost is what, is what God wants to say to you. We need to listen to what God wants to say. When we're in church, we should be desperately in, in need, excuse me, of a word from God. So when God speaks to his word, that means we don't just justify and make excuses for our sins. It means today that we humbly accept today what God says, and then we seek to obey what the word is proclaiming. And let me give you one more bullet, and I'm through. We need Christ-like reactions. We must submit to God's will even before we know what God's will is. You've got to have that mentality, that desire, and that heart. You must want what God wants for you. Well, I don't know what God wants, and I don't know if I'm up for that or not. Folks, God will enable and empower you to face, do whatever he calls you to do. So if you're going to be a good listener, you've got to believe today that the word of God is true and it supersedes your opinion and your thoughts and your ideas about anything. It's not about you. Let's put it where it belongs. It's not about you and what you want. It's about God and what he wants. And if you will choose that path, you'll find you're going to be blessed a whole lot better than you are. So you doing your thing is never going to get you to the, to the blessings of God. But you doing God's will by his word and seeking his will for your life, it will get you to the place of blessing that God has for you. There's a great difference between hearing and listening to God. So I close with a question for you today. Mull on this one. Are you hearing or are you listening to God? Thank you, Father for a time and season in the precious word of God. Thank you that Lord James speaks so clearly, precisely to us about our relationship with you. And today he has spoken to us about we need to hear, we need to listen so we can obey what you're speaking to us. I pray today that each person today has received the word into their life and today their prayer, their desire is, God, do a work in my life and help us today not just to be a hearer, but, Lord, to be a listener, and a listener then will produce a doer in our lives. Bless your people, this church. Lord, have your way here today. I pray for the salvation of the lost. I pray for the reclaiming of the backslidden. I pray for the blessings of the sanctified. I pray today for an outpouring of your spirit. 
May we worship you in the beauty and the greatness of your holiness today. May everything that we do today reflect, show, mirror, and honor you today in all things. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise, a shout, or something today that you love him. Amen. He's a good God.